Somewhere online, there's a marketplace that sells stolen passports, hacking tools, and fake IDs. Somewhere else, there's a forum where whistleblowers leak secret documents. You can't find these places on Google. They live in the dark web, the hidden internet, where anonymity rules and nothing is quite what it seems. Today, we're going to explore exactly how people navigate this underground network. We'll break down the tools, the structure, and the search methods all for education so you understand how it works and how to protect yourself. Because the truth is, most people think the dark web is a mysterious, lawless jungle. But the reality? It's actually organized. There are maps, directories, and communities, if you know where to look. And that's what we're going to reveal. First, you need to understand that the dark web is just a small part of the deep web, the huge chunk of the internet not indexed by regular search engines. The deep web includes things like private databases, academic archives, and password-protected sites. The dark web is a portion of that, intentionally hidden, only accessible with special tools. The most common gateway is the Tor network, short for the Onion Router. It routes your connection through multiple encrypted layers, making your location and identity harder to trace. Dark websites don't use .com or .org addresses. They end in Onion, and you can only open them through Tor, because these sites are hidden, you can't just type them into Google. There's no central search engine with perfect accuracy. Instead, the dark web uses a patchwork of directories, WICUS, and link lists. And that brings us to the first way people find things here, specialized directories. These are like old school web indexes, pages filled with categorized links to marketplaces, forums, news sites, and archives. Some are safe and legitimate, some are scams, and others are outright traps. That's why understanding the structure is critical. Not everything is what it says it is. The Tor browser is the main gateway. It's free, open source, and designed for anonymity. But on its own, Tor doesn't magically give you a dark web map. That's where tools like dark web search engines, like DuckDuckGo's Onion version, or niche engines built for Tor Onion directories, human curated lists of .onion links, paste sites, anonymous text sharing sites where users post new links come in. Forums play a huge role too. Many communities share updated link lists, especially after a big market or site goes offline. There are also PGP key directories, cryptographic fingerprints to verify you retalking to the real site owner or vendor. But the most valuable navigation tool isn't software, it's reputation. In the dark web, trust is currency. Vendors, forums, and search sites live or die based on user feedback. That is why communities often operate like tight-knit clubs, outsiders done, t last long without proof they re-legitimate. While the media focuses on illegal marketplaces, the dark web also has whistleblower platforms, safe spaces for journalists to receive leaks, anonymously political dissident forums for people in countries with restricted internet, academic archives, sharing research locked behind paywalls on the surface web private communities, discussing niche tech, privacy, and cryptography topics. Of course, there are also high-risk areas, drug markets, weapon sales, stolen data hubs. These are illegal in most countries, and law enforcement actively monitors them. Some areas are simply scam traps, fake services designed to take your cryptocurrency and vanish. This is why navigating without verification is dangerous. Scams are everywhere. A major part of finding anything isn't just knowing the address, but knowing whether it's real. That's why experienced users cross-check sources, look for digital signatures, and read forum reviews before trusting a link. Search on the dark web is slow and messy compared to Google. Search engines exist, like Amia, Hestak, and Kilos, but they can't index everything and they often pull outdated links. Many require users to submit links manually. That's why discovery often happens through networking. A user in a forum might drop a new market link after the old one was seized. Someone in a chat room might post a hidden forum invite. Another method is crawling, automated tools that scan the dark web for live sites. But these tools are risky. Some crawl into honeypots set up by law enforcement to catch criminals. Some researchers use link hopping, clicking through known directories jumping from one trusted link to another, building a map over time. 
It asks less about typing find X and more about knowing where trustworthy communities share that information. If you've heard the saying, curiosity killed the cat, it applies here. Simply opening the wrong link can lead to scams, malware, or tracking attempts. That's why people use VPN plus Tor together. Security-focused operating systems like Tails, blocking scripts, and plugins. Running Tor in an isolated virtual machine, they also avoid downloading files unless verified and never share personal info. Even safe areas of the dark web can be monitored. Many journalists and researchers use throwaway accounts and burner devices just for exploration. The biggest myth? That the dark web is all crime? The truth, it's a tool just like the regular internet. It can be used for illegal activity or for legitimate privacy needs. Activists, journalists, and everyday users in high surveillance countries rely on it to communicate freely. Yes, there are dangerous corners, but those are a fraction of the whole. The rest is an ecosystem of communities, some hidden in plain sight. Knowing how to find something on the dark web I send T about committing crimes is about understanding how the internet works beyond the surface. The dark web isn't magic. It's a collection of hidden websites connected by trust, secrecy, and anonymity. People find things here not because there's a perfect search engine, but because they know where to look, who to trust, and how to navigate without getting burned. The key takeaway? Understanding how it works can help you protect yourself from scams, identity theft, and data leaks, and see the bigger picture of the internet's hidden layers. Curiosity can lead to knowledge or to danger. It's up to you to choose the path.